tale of a science-created monster. We present Frankenstein, starring Lon Chaney, with John Newland and Mary Alice Moore. <laughs> All right, very well, have your laugh. You asked me to describe my idea of a perfect human being, and I tried. But Victor, darling, what you've described, and you're so serious about it. The perfect human being should be a giant in size, strong as a gorilla, disease-proof, durable, and quick to learn. Oh, it's so impossible. It is not impossible, and I didn't say should be. I said will be. Oh, does that word make a difference? It probably does. You know, even when Victor Frankenstein was a student of mine, he was brilliant. And since then, he's shown amazing talent. Originality, daring. Thank you, Doctor. But above all, he's always said what he meant. Now tell me, Victor, uh, what did you uh, mean when you said, will be? I think medical science is ready to, uh, to make an artificial human being. <laughs> and he may as well be better equipped for life than we are, no? Since you find this so amusing, Elizabeth, what's your idea of a perfect man? You, darling. <laughs> I think Victor's cousin is trying to answer that question for now you. there, there's a perfect man. Oh, see how he walks. <laughs> well, we must be going, Elizabeth. You've given us a delightful evening, but we have to catch that train back to Geneva. Oh, please don't rush. Matthew will row you back to the mainland. Will you be coming again soon? Very soon, darling. We'll let you know. Oh, this old castle. Only you would select such a place in the middle of a lake. What was your reason? To get away from me? <laughs> you can't, you know. No, Victor's always liked a quiet place to work. Is that the reason? That, and it's... it's picturesque. And? Elizabeth, uh, you sound as if you thought uh, Victor uh, was concealing something. Well, he's buried himself in this remote place. You can't leave it without a rowboat. It might almost be a prison. Many of these old castles were. Once. Now, oh, please, darling, finish your brandy. <laughs> oh, my dear. You sound as if you thought uh, Victor was holding someone here for ransom. Oh, no. <laughs> but he won't tell us what he's been experimenting with. You said yourself how talented and original Victor is. Perhaps he has been making an artificial man. He's been so preoccupied lately. Elizabeth. Oh, 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 Victor, I know. She's getting back at you with a little joke of her own. Why do you think I'm joking, Father? Because Victor is a good scientist. He knows where to draw the line between what can be done and what is impossible. But come, we must be on our way. I'm not sure Victor's talent has any such limits. Thank you, darling. That's William playing with my recorder. William, please shut it off. You've been recording our laughter. Why? I've been, uh, I've been recording various emotions for some work I'm doing. For your artificial man? No, 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 please, no, no more of that, my dear. You'll be having me thinking that way, too. And you shouldn't, really, in this uh, 16th century castle. It's too spooky. Come on, let's hurry. I wouldn't want to spend the night here. I hope you're not that anxious to leave. Are you? No, of course not. Take care of yourself, darling. You don't look well. I've been worried about you. Good night, William. Good night.
science laughs at the idea of a man being a creator. Well, I have created you. I've made you stronger than ten men. You're indestructible. And now I shall give you life. Now I shall, I shall give you life. Now. days. There's a great deal, a great deal for you to learn. The world, the world mustn't see you. Not yet. Not yet. I'll come back and we'll teach you everything you need to know. Everything. Now. Now. Ah! <laughs> 
at dinner. Do you think Miss Elizabeth guessed right? Of course not. Dr. Frankenstein's a very clever man. He's not as clever as all that. No one is. But he's got something locked in that room. His research equipment. It's very valuable. But who's to steal it? No one can get to the island without the rowboat. And there's only one boat on the lake. Whatever he's got in that room, it's not just equipment. Sierra Elise, you're not to be nervous or upset. Miss Elizabeth is just a hysterical young woman. Oh, so you think women are hysterical? Now, now, I didn't mean you. You know how smart I think you are. Oh, you're just saying that to get around me. You think all women have no sense. It isn't so. Why, how would I get along without you? And then you meant that. I do. Now, what good would I be alone? Oh, you know oh, stop your nonsense. We have work to do. Uh, let's get our chair back where it's on the floor. Oh. Who are you? Who are you? Hey, guys.
did I do wrong? What did I overlook? I'm, I'm completely responsible, Matthew. Once I swore that I would, I would practice medicine for the good of humanity. I created the being with no thought of, of what would become of him. No thought of the danger involved. No thought of a tragedy like this. This could all have been prevented. It could have been prevented. I should never have started this. I should never have started it. And now I'll get rid of it. What are you doing? Hurry, let's stop and stop my notes. Hurry. It'll never happen again. It'll never happen again. There are some things that are better left undone. He must be destroyed. Just because the basement... No, there's no time for that. We must do it ourselves. Master William. William. He's alone in his room upstairs. Quickly. Match. No. My gun. Father, bring me back. I've been so terribly worried about you. We talked of nothing but you all the way here. I, I had a feeling that something was wrong, that you were in danger. It's over now, Elizabeth. What is, darling? I must tell you. I must tell you. I, I only pray that you'll understand. Do you remember the last time you were here, we talked of my work, of an artificial man, if it could be done, what it would be like? Yes. Well, it was not idle talk, Elizabeth. I created a living, breathing creature. You created? Yes. Yes, now you must believe me. I was thinking only of the scientific achievement of the immensity of it. I was thinking only of the power of creation. Somewhere something went wrong. Something went wrong. Elizabeth, I created a monster. Tonight he tried to, to kill William and he did kill Elise. Thank God the danger's passed now. He's dead at the bottom of the lake. But I had to tell you. I'm glad you did. Matthew just told me. What a terrible experience. It's passed now, Father. Let's not talk about it anymore. But Victor. The things you must have learned. I shall never want to speak of it again. Nonsense. This could be the greatest contribution to science and history. You've no right to keep it to I yourself. I had no right to start it. But the, uh, see, the, the experiment could be tried again. Surely the... He's dead. He's at the bottom of the lake. 
Try to lure him to my laboratory. Oh, but this small boy. The monster has the mind of a child. It's, uh, it's direct and very slow. Now, you must be very brave. You must not know we're trying to trick him. Now, listen, you, you play or sing or do whatever you like, but he must not know we're trying to trick him. Your father and Master and I will wait in the laboratory. Make your way there. He's sure to find I won't have it. There's nothing else to do. If we don't destroy him, we'll all be killed anyway. Victor's right, Father. We've got to do it. Are you ready, Willie? Give us just a few moments, and God bless you. Quickly. Are you scared, William? Well, so am I. But let's not let on, shall we? All right. Yes? This is Thomas Paine of the National Museum. I'm calling for Professor Abernathy. We've been trying to reach you for a week. I've been out of town. Gone. Uh, it's about the expedition to the glacier. Oh, oh what? Have they returned? Well, yes. Unexpectedly. Did they find anything? Uh, not exactly. Uh, you see, uh, Professor Norton... Come, come. What about Professor Norton? Uh, he... He did not come back. What? The members of the expedition are meeting tonight at the museum. Can you attend? Certainly, Mr. Payne. What time? Eight o'clock. And may I ask you, sir, not to fail us? Of course I won't. But what's happened to Norton? At the moment, sir, I cannot say. We'll expect you then at eight o'clock. What we have to report is of the utmost urgency. Now, 
gentlemen a simple expedition to the Arctic and you come back whimpering like children. Now, really, what do you expect me to think, Professor Abernathy? Uh, please be seated, Dr. Vega. Thank God you've come. You know Thomas Paine of the museum? Yes, yes, he telephoned me. Hi. And my associate, Craig Taylor. How do you do, Mr. Taylor? Good evening, Doctor. Now, what happened to Norton? It's uh, hard to explain. Professor, either he came back or he didn't. Which was it? He did not. That thing in the other room. Not yet, Payne. Thing? Thing? What thing? Before you see it, Doctor, it will take explanation. What do you think I am, a child? You believe I'm, I'm too naive to know the facts? Let me refresh you. I backed your expedition. My father disappeared in those wilds five years ago and was never found. Professor Norton thought he knew the route, that he could find some trace, but you return without him, cowering like a pack of whipped puppies. Now, speak up, gentlemen. What happened? Have patience with us, Dr. Vega. We, uh, we've stumbled upon something we do not understand. Something that's cost the life of Professor Norton. And may not stop there. Well, well, go ahead. Tell me the full story. We had camped for the night on the glacier. The next morning we noticed a fissure in the ice. A passageway large enough for a man to crawl through. In the ice we could see the frozen body of a dog. It wasn't one of ours. I thought it might have been one of your father's. Norton decided to crawl into the fissure to investigate. Taylor remained with me. A storm came up suddenly, and when we called out to Norton in the passageway. Professor Norton, have you found any trace? Professor! What do you make of it, Craig? He's been in there 15 minutes. Do you think he's all right? I don't know. We haven't heard from him since he left us. With a storm blowing, a fissure isn't exactly a safe place to be. Danger of an avalanche. Better warn him. Professor Norton, there's a storm. Let's get out of here. No answer. Got a flashlight? It's dark in there. Yes. Come on, we better look for him. Fisher doesn't appear too old. No, perhaps only a few days old. Otherwise, there'd be a heavy layer of snow on the bottom. I hope that ice overhead is solid. Any kind of slide would bury us. Pitch black now. I didn't realize the passage was this deep. What's that ahead? Huh? It's like a rock where the glacier meets the mountainside. A few more feet and we'll be there. Why, it looks like the entrance of a cave. Norton must be inside. Certainly took a chance going this far by himself. Shall we go in? We have no choice. Look, it's not a natural cave. You're right. The entrance is a carved arch. Solid quartz. Do you recognize the symbols? I've never seen anything like this before. Quite a find, Craig, and by coincidence, too. If that fissure in the ice hadn't opened here, it might have been lost forever. How old would you guess it is? Impossible to tell. We've got to find Norton. Hand me the light. I'll go first. Professor Norton! Professor! Looks like an ancient crypt. Tarnished urns, ornate carving. Unhealthy atmosphere, Craig. I don't know what we've stumbled on, but from the past I know nothing about. Where could Norton have gone? Seems to be the only room. It's got to be here. I'll move the light around once again, slowly. A man just doesn't disappear in thin air. What's that? Where? A pile of rubble. Something caved in. Yes, in the corner. Come on. It's Norton. He's alive. Quick, clear the rocks. He's caught in the slide. Professor Norton, can you hear me? Yes. I, I'm done for, Abernathy. You and Craig, get out of here as fast as you can. Nonsense. We'll have you free in a moment. There's another room behind those rocks. Don't, don't go in there. I moved some rocks to cover the doorway. Slide. Buried me. Did you find a trace of Dr. Vega's father? No. Just cover that doorway and... Leave. Norton. Poor devil. He's gone. Strange. What's that? I am not a medical doctor. But he doesn't seem to have been fatally injured by the cave-in. What do you mean? The answer may lie in there. He was probably delirious. We'd better get out of here. But before we do, shouldn't we have a look? Norton warned us. Would a scientist refuse? After you, Professor. Careful, Craig. Don't upset that boulder. It could stop all our plans. He's under that arch. We don't know how old this is. It may crumble. Why, it's just a room like the other. Look, straight ahead. At the foot of that altar. Yes. Sparkles like a jewel. That's what Norton warned us about. Nonsense. We're scientists, Craig. Norton was no fool. Neither am I. Let's have a closer look. A ten-foot jewel. A prize from the Arabian Nights. Or... A quartz sarcophagus. Of course. Why was Norton afraid of it? It's not locked. 
The lid can be raised. Don't, Don't, Professor. My boy, this is what every scientist dreams of. How can you refuse? <sighs> All right. I can't tell why. Something seems to be wanting me to leave this alone. If you have to, take a look. And let's get out of here. Harry, give me a hand. Okay. <laughs> What was it? What did you find in the sarcophagus, Professor Abernathy? Will you follow us, please, Dr. Vega? Wait. It might be better to destroy it. Mr. Taylor, you can't do that. Yes, I know. The museum. You might remember we have financed your exploits for many years. There is some sort of obligation to us, don't you think? Pardon me. I had forgotten the commercial aspects. The public has a right to see these remnants of mankind's past. Gentlemen, now, will you follow me, please? Frankly, we are at a loss to make it out is entirely beyond the range of my experience. In the center of the room, if you will. The court sarcophagus. Well, what are we waiting for? Open it. I hope we don't regret this. Help me, Craig. Okay. <laughs> there it is, Dr. Vega. This is incredible. Is it some kind of... Joke? We wish it were, Doctor. Man. A crystalline man, perfect in detail, even to his thumbprints. It's fantastic. What do you think, Mr. Payne? I haven't had a great deal of time to research it. However, I can't link him to any period of recorded history. He is not prehistoric as he resembles modern man. His clothing is well tailored, though of a design I've never seen. He looks 45, intelligent and scholarly. He doesn't have the appearance of death. The strange part is, instead of flesh and blood, he seems to be pure crystal. Is it possible the man could once have lived? And if he could, what forgotten tongue lost in the antiquity of time would he speak? We may know tomorrow. How do you mean? I believe that by some process unknown to us today, this man is still alive. <laughs> It's no use. We've tried everything. He is solid crystal. I was mistaken. He is perfect to the last blood vessel. Why should a man who is not flesh and blood need blood vessels? Shall we admit he is merely a sculptured statue? We don't seem able to prove otherwise, but I feel some obvious fact is escaping us. Wait. There is one further chance. He may be a silicon form of life. In that case, he should respond to electric shock, be recharged, so to speak. Let me connect these electrodes. Any sign of life will show in the form of a brain wave on the electroencephalogram. Good thinking, Professor. Mm. There. Now we'll give him a jolt. Hmm. Nothing. Try it again. Not a thing. Look. An eyelid moved. No, Payne, you're mistaken. Nothing moved. Professor, did you see? No. If he's alive... It's in a form unknown to us. What will you do with him? You finance the expedition, Dr. Vega. You call it. But, gentlemen, the museum... Mr. Payne, can't you forget that place? Does every scientific discovery have to go on display like a bargain in Gimbel's basement? Well, I only assume the, the body would have to be disposed of somewhere. Are you sure you want it, Mr. Payne? After Norden's warning? What happened to Professor Norden had nothing to do with the crystalline man... He was probably delirious when you found him. All right, enough. The truth of this still escapes us. However, it, it can serve no purpose by remaining here. We may have it. You may regret it, Payne, but... Go ahead. Take it. Put it on display in the, in the slumber room. That may well be what he's doing. Very well. We'll exhibit it in the public interest. With the provision that you retain the right to examine it when you choose. Oh, Professor. I just left the car in his office. Too bad. The coroner's office? The guard we found unconscious here this morning. The one guarding the crystalline man last night? Yes. He just died. Act two of The Crystalline Man will be heard in a moment. But first, what causes traffic accidents? Weather conditions, road conditions, vehicle conditions. These all have some part in the total traffic picture. But it's the driver's own conditions, both mental and physical, that cause a great many of the accidents that you read and hear about day by day. 
You may find somewhere in the accident report that the driver in an accident was tired, angry, inattentive, or had been drinking. Harder to find in the report would be the driver's mental state at the time of the accident. In many cases, the driver didn't know, didn't think, or didn't care about the possibility of having an accident. How can he be made more aware of the danger he is causing to himself and everyone else? The National Safety Council suggests one good way is by an active community campaign against such thinking. And that's where you come in. Our community and our local safety organizations need your active support. Let's all accept our responsibility to join the fight for life and help save lives. And now, Act Two of The Crystalline Man. Man, you kids eat like horses. It's a good thing your father makes a little money. It takes it all just to feed you. Craig, <laughs> now stop it. When you were their age, you had some life in you, too. <laughs> There's plenty of life left in this old boy, Mary. <laughs> hey, Dad, when you quit laughing, can I ask you a question? Go ahead, Jimmy. Try me. After supper, can I go over to Ralph's a while? And can I go, too, Daddy? Now, wait a minute. Both of you? What's going on? Ralph's got a new turtle. You children run along. But don't be out late. Oh, boy. Come on, let's go. Jimmy, you and Christine, be careful and come home before dark. Sure thing. Bye, Dad. We will. Bye, Daddy. Wow. A couple of wild Indians. <laughs> Reminds me how old I'm getting. Oh, darling, they're just little children. I wish I could be carefree like that. Craig, things are different, aren't they? Oh? How? Something's bothering you. You're imagining it. No, no. Ever since that last trip, you, you all seem worried. How long has it been in the museum? Two weeks. Two weeks. And two more. Don't go on, Mary. The police said Mrs. Locks died from natural causes. She was found the next morning by her pail and mop in the Egyptian room. And what about Gus? Faithful old Gus. Best night watchman we ever had. I know. He was old and ready to retire. But don't you think something got him, too? He was found like Mrs. Locks, dead the next morning. Mary, you'd... Uh... There's talk now, Craig. Before long, people will be afraid to go to the museum. If the police find any connection between those deaths and this... this... Crystal and man, you'll all be in trouble. It's against any kind of logic to think that. Darling, you've said so yourself. There are many things in this world we don't understand. That doesn't mean they don't exist. It means at the moment we haven't the capacity for understanding. We've uncovered the genius of some civilization long past. If the man is not a statue, he certainly isn't a corpse, then he was preserved for a reason. Professor Norton suspected right away. He was trying to wall up the crypt so he wouldn't find him when he was fatally injured. Now the crystalline man lies in the museum like some Trojan horse, harboring God knows what menace from the dawn of time. I, I, I'm sorry, Mary. It had to come out. I'm glad you said it, darling. We should have destroyed him. We couldn't bring ourselves to do it. He's so lifelike. It would have seemed like murder. You can't let things like this continue. The police have nothing to go on. But you know what's wrong. You can stop him. All I have is a feeling, a suspicion. I promise you, Mary. What, darling? If there's another death, I'll take it on myself to find out what's wrong with the crystalline man. There's the night watchman. You want to ask him, Christine? No, you ask. Oh, all right. Mister? Eh? Museum's closed. You kids go away. I gotta ask you something. Run along now. Be dark soon. You ought to be home. Please, mister. We have to go inside. Oh, do you now? You tell him, Christine. Okay, Jimmy. We were here after school today. I left my homework in there. Museum's locked up. Come back tomorrow. Your books will be turned into the main office. You can pick them up then. But you don't understand. She has to study her homework tonight. Don't you see? Or I'll get a spanking. Do your parents know where you are? Gosh, no. They think we're at Ralph's seeing a turtle. We said that so I could get my homework. Please, mister. Well, you should be more careful. You don't want us to get spanked, do you? I'm not supposed to let anybody in. I might lose my job. Regulations, you know. It'll be a secret just between us. We won't tell anyone. Yeah, a secret. Okay. Just between us, then. But remember, no tricks. Whisk in, pick up homework, whisk out. Just like that. Check. Check. Know where you left it, Christine? Yes, on the table by the dinosaur. It's pretty dark. Can you see your way? I think so. Be right back. What's your last name, son? Taylor. What? Your father is Craig Taylor? Sure. Professor Abernathy's associate. I knew it. Now I will be in trouble. Don't worry. We won't tell him. Some days you can't win. Christine, hurry up. 
Let me go in. I'll find her. Uh, yes, good idea. Quick, get your sister. Hurry up, son. I don't want any trouble. Uh, now I've done it. When the professor finds I've broken regulations, I'll be out of me job. That's funny. Those kids are taking a long time. Christine! Jimmy! Make it snappy! Hope nobody comes along the street and sees me here with this door open. Oh, goodbye job. Hey, those two ought to be back. I don't hear us peep out of them. Getting too dark in there to make much out. Hey, Christine! Jimmy! Uh-oh. Hey, I don't like this. Hey, there! You kids all right? Was she, Craig? Edna Thorpe, a cleaning woman. Please, Mr. Taylor. I hope there won't be no trouble about me letting the kids in. How did I know they'd find old Mrs. Thorpe dead? Natural causes again, Craig? Police coroner said heart attack. Christine, you're sure the dead woman was the only thing you saw? Yes, Daddy. I just found my homework when I saw her. Then Jimmy came in. We were too scared to move, Dad. Uh Uh-huh. What are you going to do? Mary, you can see what we're facing here. Take the children home. I'll be along later. But, Craig, aren't you coming with us? No, I'm spending the night in the museum. It's time we learn the truth. Not alone, darling. That's too dangerous. The deaths occur only when there are no witnesses. The only way to find out is to bait the hook. I'll stay in there alone tonight. The killer may be tempted to strike again. And then we'll know. Ten past two. Getting sleepy. Big place. Those two dinosaurs aren't kittens. The Egyptian mummies back in the east wing. Caveman relics. And the crystalline man in the slumber room. He's a standout, all right. Attracts the crowds in the jewel sarcophagus. There he is. Almost in a standing position. Sarcophagus tilted back so he can't fall out. Six feet of complete mystery. A man of the world, but not of this world. Question is, is he statue or is he real? I think no one knew. Too bad he couldn't have told us more. The strange thing is that in this collection of relics of the past, he alone doesn't reflect some state of decomposition. The key lies there, I'm sure of it. But logic tells me our killer is flesh and blood. <sighs> Wish they'd turn on more light at night. I'm oh, sorry I sent everyone away. The place has an eerie, uncomfortable feeling. There's a chair around here. Oh, there it is. <sighs> Feels good to sit down. I don't think it'll hurt to close my eyes for a moment. I've been over every inch of this place. Safe enough, I guess. <sighs> Could be coincidence. Those people who died all old, including Norton. Oh, boy, I'm getting sleepy. Maybe a little cat nap wouldn't hurt just a little whimper. Shadow standing over me. How could anyone have come in? Can't see in the dark. Something is going to hit me. But... Uh, uh, stop! stop! Who are you? Beyond thy capacity to understand. The crystal of land. You are alive. Since the beginning of time. How old are you? Perhaps a million of five years. 
But modern man doesn't go back that far. Who are you? Lower, a man of science, flesh and blood as thou, until the change. Change? I made the transition to silicon crystal, a higher form of life, free from disease, free from radiation sickness. Then, a catastrophe. We are also men of science. Uh, perhaps we, we, we can get together. Savage. Barbarians. We are a journey apart. Why haven't you risen before? This form of life is like a battery. It must be charged. I see. With the life force of others. Thou speakest well, Savage. So that's what Norton knew. Revive him and there'll be no stopping him. Thou knowest too much, Savage. What is thy say? To the victor goes the spoil. I will touch thee, and thou wilt be gone. No! Stand still. It will be painless, just a touch, and I will be of strength to begin my work. Don't, Don't come any closer. Fear me not, Savage. I am warning you. Where can thou escape? The wall is behind, and I am before thee. Keep away from me. Now, Savage, I shall spank thee to death. That scream, high enough to shatter crystal. You saved my life. Look, the man of a million years at our feet in a million pieces. Can you say with absolute certainty what does or does not dwell within the limitless ocean of the night? Are the dark and shrouded legions of evil not what figments of the imagination because you and your puny conceit say they cannot exist? Whence came the story told in frightened whispers down through the ages of witch and warlock Werewolf and vampire, and all the spawn of hell, born on the sable wings of night to the unholy communion of the witches' Sabbath.
can you defile this sacred house with the body of that evil man, that servant of the devil? His hands are stained with the blood of the innocent, and his unspeakable sorceries. Please, please, you can't create a disturbance here. Dr. Clayton, I'm terribly sorry. Poor old Kate hasn't been quite right since the shocking murder of her little granddaughter last year. But I never dreamed... I understand. Why don't you please go on with the service? Dust to dust, and may his soul find a mercy. Isn't that all for the best, Uncle Lloyd? After all, he caused you nothing but unhappiness. He was my brother. Yet he always seemed an alien soul, even in childhood. I believe he hated me all his life. After he returned from India, Elwin was like a man obsessed by a demon. Nothing was sacred to him. He had nothing but contempt for all the decent men hold dear. His mind became a black and evil thing probing into the perverted knowledge of ancient sorcery and demonology. Must have been insane. We're all quick to call insane any mentality that deviates from the conventional. There have been many things in heaven and earth undreamed of in our philosophy. Oh, David, you take Gail home. I'm going to Elvin's house. Well, you're sure you won't leave me, Dr. Clayton? Yes, quite sure. Now run along, dear. I'll be home very soon. All right, Uncle Lloyd. Come on, David. the law believe his death was an accident. But I know you murdered him. You threw him from the top of the cliff. I thought only to save my own life. He brought his death upon himself. You lie. You followed him there to murder him. You couldn't get anyone to believe that. <sighs> what do I care what they believe? You pray for death long before you die. made me very happy. No happier than you've made me. And now, don't you think we'd better tell Uncle Lloyd? After all, he is my guardian. Of course, although I don't think he'll be very much surprised.
Are you back already? Has the moon lost its appeal? Why, not at all, sir. I... Well, that is, we... Uh, what I'm trying to say is that... Could you possibly be trying to tell me that you and Gail are in love? That's it, exactly, sir. I hope we have your approval. Yes, David. I know her happiness will be safe in your hands. I'll do my best, sir. I believe you. I can face the future with a lighter heart. You speak as if you were in danger. No, not at all, dear. It just makes me feel happy to know that your future's assured, that's all. Dark Lord of the Abyss, I live. I am not yet strong, but the power has been given me to draw everlasting life from the veins of the living. They will give me the blood from their hearts. with me only during the hours of darkness. From dawn to dusk, I lie helpless in the grave. What do you make of it, Dr. Clayton? I don't know. She was in perfect health a week ago, now she's dead.
think it was murder? I don't know what to say. There's not a wound on the body except the two tiny puncture marks in the throat. If the appearance of the body would indicate that she bled to death. I could tell you why she died, but you wouldn't believe me. Kate, if you go snooping around, I'll have to send you away. Oh, please don't do that. I don't mean any harm. You're a good man, Dr. Clayton. Everyone knows the goodness of your heart. But your brother Elwin brought terrible evil upon us. He's dead, Kate. And all evil died with him. But it didn't die. It's growing stronger every day. That's enough. You'd better leave. I suppose by rights I should send her to an institution. Oh, that would be needless cruelty. She's perfectly harmless. I'll take your word for it. I think I should order an autopsy. This may be murder. I doubt if you'd learn much from an autopsy. The bloodless condition of the body wasn't caused by any known poison. I start with you? I'm so sorry. But you can't be standing there. You're dead. No, I'm not dead. I have life far beyond anything you can understand. But that doesn't make you any of the less guilty of murder. You took it upon yourself to sit in judgment of me and destroy my mortal span of life. Am I losing my mind? There was no sign of life in Elwyn's body when it was placed in the vault. You'll know that I'm no intangible figment of your imagination when you feel the weight of my hatred. Your life will be a torment. I'll strip you of everything you hold dear or I'd drag you down to a sordid death. so many poetic rhapsodies. Gail was an easy hypnotic subject, and I would make her my disciple. And to save her from the initiated into the dark mysteries, the eminently respectable Dr. Clayton stooped to murder. Yes. Your life, a menace to all this clean and decent, had no right to exist. That you failed. <laughs> By the power of those I serve, my life is indestructible. Eternally sustained by the life I take from others. I will take life from Gail. Slowly. You will see her life ebb day by day and be powerless to save her. Man, oh devil, I don't know what you are, but... Uncle Lloyd? Yes, there's nothing to worry about, dear. I, I thought I saw a burglar, that's all. 
Oh, you nearly frightened me to death. I'm sorry I frightened you. It was nothing but a shadow. That's very really late. Hadn't you better go to bed? All right. Good night, dear. Good night, Uncle Lloyd. Good night, David. It's a long time to wait, but I'll see you in the morning. Oh, an ambitious young doctor shouldn't waste his valuable time picking up pretty speeches. Good night. Good night. Forgive me, Dr. Clayton, if I seem to be impertinent. But have you told all the truth about that shooting? No. I have reason to doubt my own sanity. Why do you say that? I saw my brother Elwyn here as plainly as I see you and talk to him. If it was no insane hallucination, it's too terrible to think about. Oh, don't worry about it. You've been under a great strain lately, and you know what kind of tricks our nerves play on us sometimes. Yes, that's my only hope. If you'd let me take over most of the burden of your practice for a while, I'm sure you'd be all right in no time. Thank you, David. The final outcome will be the same. In a short time now, they will call you dead. Then you will awaken and be as I am now. You will serve and obey me forever. Is she any better today? I'm desperately worried about her. In spite of everything I can do, she grows steadily weaker. Haven't you discovered the cause yet? As you can see, she has all the symptoms of acute anemia. And I'm treating her for that. But I can't find a single case in medical history where it develops so quickly. There must be something that can be done. Can't just let her die. Cause you and Uncle Lloyd so much worry. Now, don't you fret about it. We're going to have you up and about in just no time at all. I know you will. Isn't it lovely out here in the sunshine? But it's so different at night. I have such awful nightmares. I dread falling asleep. Why? What do you dream about? I dream of a horrible bat-like creature hovering over me. I try to struggle, but I can't move a muscle. And it seems to swoop down and suffocate me. 
Where did you get those marks on your neck? Uh, an insect bite, I guess. I was rather unsightly, so I've been wearing the scarf. When did that happen? I don't know. I just happened to discover the marks the other morning when I was looking in the mirror. Was it painful? No. In fact, there's no sensation in that particular spot at all. Hmm. That's fine. Dr. Clayton, uh, don't you think Gail should have a blood transfusion immediately? Yes, I've been thinking about that. I'll advertise for a donor. I'd like to do it, if my blood's the right type. Good, I'll make a test. There's more color in her face already. How do you feel, darling? Ever so much better. I don't think we have any more to worry about. Uncle anyone ever had. Hurry and get well, darling. Remember, you've got a date for a wedding. I won't Is anything troubling you? Yes. I saw a face outside Gail's window. Well, that's absurd. Gail's window is on the second. I know it sounds fantastic. But I'm convinced that Elvin is responsible in some way for some intangible menace threatening us all. Well, that's impossible. Elvin's dead. I know it's impossible according to all normal laws of nature, but can we be sure there are no supernatural laws beyond our understanding? We've been watching Gail grow steadily weaker and weaker, sinking every day. And medical science could offer no explanation. Dr. Clayton, even though some things may be unknown to medical science, I'd hardly look to superstition for the explanation. Don't ask me to believe that Elwin's threatening Gail's life. The dead have no power over the living. I don't know what I believe myself. One reads of so many things for which there seems to be no natural explanation. Will you come with me to the vault where Elwin is buried? Why go there? Because if there is such a thing as a vampire existence after death, the state of the body will show the proof and it can be destroyed. Well, that's ridiculous. I feel like a fool or worse. Prowling around dead bodies on such an errand. Can you afford to be squeamish where Gail's life may be in danger? All right, I'll go with you. If what I fear is true, there's no time to lose. stolen by medical students. I'm afraid that's not the answer. Elwin dedicated his entire life to the dark powers of evil. What unholy forces he set in motion. Dr. Clay, ignorant people believe that sort of thing in medieval times, but not anymore. I know there's a natural cause for every effect, and I don't believe Gail's life is being threatened by any supernatural power from beyond the grave. Perhaps you're right, I don't know. Dr. Clayton, I'd like to marry Gail immediately and take her away. I think a change of climate might be beneficial. 
I don't know whether that would be advisable or not. I'll think it over. wait any longer. Well, what's the trouble? Unless you do something right away, I'm afraid Gail's going to be murdered. Well, who do you suspect of trying to murder her? Dr. Clayton. Oh, that's impossible. Why, Dr. Clayton's one of the finest men I ever knew. That's what I used to believe. But I've been forced to change my opinion. He's either losing his mind or he's attempting to divert suspicion from himself with some fantastic story of supernatural vengeance from beyond the grave. But why should he want to kill her? She has considerable money which he would inherit if she died unmarried. Well, Dr. Clayton wouldn't want her money. He has plenty of his own. Besides, that's a very serious charge to make, merely on suspicion. What if it is? I'm watching her die, and something's got to be done. The other night, I insisted that he give her a blood transfusion, and immediately her condition improved. I myself could see how she became stronger. The next morning, she was weaker than ever. Well, there isn't a thing I can do unless you give me some definite proof of criminal intent. After Gail is dead, you may be able to charge him with murder. That will be a great comfort to me. what was happening to you, and I had to come here. I'm the only one who can save you. I appreciate your interest, but Uncle Lord's doing everything possible. I know you don't believe me. You think I'm crazy. Everyone does. But I know more about some things than you'll find in all the doctor books in this room. You wear that scarf to hide the marks on your throat. I know what made them. I know what steals the light from you at night. And I also know what'll save you. There's no use for me to talk to Dr. Clayton or no one else. They wouldn't believe me. The sheriff said he'd send me away if I made a nuisance of myself. Don't worry about that. I can help you if you'll let me. Here, wear this. Wear it around your neck always. Never take it off. I naturally hold the cross in reverence. But how can wearing it be of any greater help? Because they haven't the power to touch a sacred symbol. Hey, who do you mean? Vampires, creatures of the devil who are neither alive nor dead. During the day, they sleep in their graves in death-like sleep. But at night, they have the power to roam the earth. Oh, uh, I didn't mean no harm, Dr. Clayton. Don't be afraid. I know you didn't mean any harm. Excitement isn't good for our patient. I didn't mean to get her excited. I was just anxious to help her, that's all. I understand that, but I, I think you'd better go. The vampire is your brother, Elwin. Take his body from the vault and destroy it with fire. That's the only way you can put an end to his evil power. The body isn't there. Someone has removed it. You must find where it is. Nothing can destroy his power at night, but his sorcery cannot protect him during the day. I'll do all I can to help you find him. Do you believe what she said? Is that why I have those horrible nightmares? I don't know, dear. It seems utterly impossible, and yet it's the only answer to an impossible condition. I'd been convinced that some malignant powers at work, but I didn't want to frighten you with that, and I couldn't even believe the evidence of my own eyes. Do as she said. Wear this, my dear. 
is the symbol of a power that delivers from all evil. And we need divine help. stand this any longer. We've got to have a showdown. I think you're killing Gail. How can I be doing that? I don't know what devilish means you are using. But if she dies, I'll kill you. I've done everything in my power to save her. Don't expect me to believe that. Anyone with the slightest medical knowledge can see that she's not suffering from any normal disease. Her vitality is being systematically destroyed. That's true. I don't know how I can make you believe what my own common sense calls impossible. Her life is threatened by some abnormal creature that has no right to exist. That abnormal creature is human, not a ghost returning from the grave. If I could possibly do so, I'd take her away from here. But the law protects you. All I can do is hold you responsible for her life. If she dies, so will you. I don't blame you for suspecting me. I don't blame you for thinking possibly that I'm a homicidal maniac. But the truth is even more unbelievable. I honestly believe that she's better off here than if you took her away. But why don't you stay and watch over her? I'd be glad to have your help. I'm sorry if I've done you an injustice. But I've been so worried about Gail, I've nearly lost my mind. I understand, and I sympathize with you with all my heart. Let's go up and see how she is. How do you feel, dear? A little better. And I wasn't troubled with any nightmares. Good. Go back to sleep. I'm going to sit here beside you for a while. It'll be nice to know that you're near me, even when I'm asleep. I believe you won't be troubled with any more nightmares. Good night, dear. Good night, Uncle Lloyd. When they're all asleep, break into the house and get the chain from around her neck, Zola. You can do it, I can't. I will do as you say, Master.
What do you want with me? I didn't do anything. Be quiet or I'll break your neck. What do you know about this? That's Elwin Serp. What's he doing here? It looked as if he were trying to strangle Gail. I wasn't going to hurt her. What were you doing in the room? Elwin sent him for some purpose. You're the one who removed Elwin's body from the vault. Where did you hide it? I don't know what you're talking about. Elwin is dead. What's he's all... neither dead nor alive. He's a vampire. And Gail will never be out of danger until his body is in ashes. What is this talk about vampires? I know you don't believe him, but I can't let that stand in my way now. I'll hesitate at nothing to make you talk. Where does he lie hidden during the day? You'll never know. No, you don't. I want to know what you're doing in this house. There he goes. What chance have you against me? I have powers at my command far beyond your wildest dreams. Your life is forfeit any time I care to take it. Now you know what we're up against. What can we do against a creature like that? Despite what he said, he can be destroyed. In the meantime, you guard Gale. Don't leave her alone for a minute. Yes, sir. You failed. I couldn't help it. He woke up. I'll try again. That opportunity is gone. I'll be on that guard now. Let's try something else. Good evening, Doctor. Young Bentley made some wild talk before church this morning. Yes, he was half out of his mind with worry. He came here to accuse me of trying to murder Gail. Yes, that was it. But you don't believe that? No. But others heard, and gossip has gone all around. And considerable feeling has been stirred up, and there's no telling what some irresponsible hothead might do. I'm sorry to have people feel that way about me, but I don't see what I can do about it. Well, I suggest that you go away for a while. They'll soon cool down and come to their senses. But I can't leave. I have work here that must be done.
So this is where you lie hidden during the day. The color in your face proving you are a vampire. And not one of the honest dead who rest in peace. Dr. Clayton will believe me when he sees you. And fire will destroy your evil power. make one of them crazy Jekyll and Hyde fellas that puts on a pious ass during the daytime and goes around at night committing murder. You're right. Yes, you know. sir. When yes. people are dying and no one knows the reason why, it looks like murder to me, and we better do something and about we it. Will. I don't like that kind of talk, Wilkins. Maybe we don't like the way you're not doing anything. I'm doing everything possible. There's not the slightest proof of murder against anyone. And I'll throw you in jail for inciting mob violence if you don't keep quiet. been murdered. Murdered? murdered. Well, yeah. Where did this happen? In that old abandoned cemetery. I heard her scream, but by the time I got there, she's dead. Her, her neck was broken. Did you see anyone? No, and I didn't hang around looking for anyone. I ain't lost no crazy murderers. Oh, Kate never harmed a soul in her life. Her death is proof enough that there's a crazy killer roaming around here. Yeah. 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 Finding yeah. him is my business. I'll not stand for any mob taking matters in their own hands. That's final. Take me to where the body is. Hmm? Yes, sir. We better do something pretty quick. you and I had to kill her. I knew they'd search the cemetery, so I brought you here. You will be well rewarded for your faithful service of love. Make a secret clip for me here where I can remain undisturbed. Everything will be as you say. O oh, mighty Lord of the Abyss, your servant bows in eternal obedience to your will. Time has come when I must destroy all those who stand in our way.
finding this place across the Cape her life would do no good. If I'd only known in time that he was here. another murder. I saw him as plain as I see you and he glared at me like a devil. You get on the phone and run some of the folks. We we'll stop this right now. She's all right. I look in every few minutes. Did you find the hiding place? Yes, but I was too late. The coffin had been removed. I don't know why I didn't think to search the old cemetery before. Before Kate sacrificed her life. We stood around long enough waiting for the sheriff to do something. Hey, 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 hey. Gail's all right. She's sleeping like a baby. What's her next move? I don't know. We must find that coffin. I don't know where to search. Why don't we just try and think of all the logical places? Elwyn's house. Might have been taken there. That's worth trying. Dr. Clayton. You stay here with Gail. Let me go. No. I told you before, I feel that I must be the one to destroy him. We were brothers, and there was a bond of hatred between us that lasted a lifetime. If I fail, then you must be the one to take up the fight. For Gail's sake and for the sake of mankind. around the house. The rest come with me. Where's Doc Clayton? He's not here. Where is he? What do you want with him? We're going to stop him from committing any more crazy murders. Dr. Clayton is innocent. Well, you said yourself he was trying to murder Gail. I was wrong. Please believe me, terribly wrong. No, you weren't. You were right. I saw the proof tonight with my own eyes, and I caught him red-handed. That 
couldn't have been Dr. Clayton. It was his brother, Elwin. Have you gone crazy? Elwin Clayton is dead. Everyone knows that. You don't understand. I him. don't understand why you're trying to protect him. All right, men, go ahead and search the house. Come on, you. Wilkins, you Get stupid fool. Go ahead with the search, man. I'm telling you the truth when I say that Elwin's responsible for those murders. I'm beginning to believe that you're just as crazy and dangerous as Duck Clayton. sometime. Would you look at this? A book on witchcraft and vampires. No one in his right mind would read this sort of trash. Don't be daylight. I suppose he just went out for an evening stroll, huh? You wouldn't understand. I understand about murder and I know what to do about it. thought with you to your death. Kay will become a vampire, a slave to my will forever. Come <laughs> on! 
now weakening, aren't you? Your time is almost come. Dawn, you'll be as helpless as one truly did. <laughs> Touch that dial. I must offer to you a confession. I like movies that give me a fright. If the subject is horror, I've got to see more. Or I won't be contented all night. You may call it my ghoulish obsession. It's a subject on which I get chatty. But the worst one, it seems, haunting all of my dreams was the cockroach that ate Cincinnati. I've seen ghouls and hobgoblins and witches and some moth-eaten werewolves with fangs. There were creatures that chattered and others that clattered and Japanese monsters with bangs. Frankenstein gives me the shakes and Tothrucula driving me batty. But they're not on a par with the worst one by far, the cockroach that ate Cincinnati. <laughs> Must have needed a seltzer. It's amazing how much he got down. For lunch, he just chew up a suburb or two. And for dinner, he ate the whole town. Willard just sent me out laughing. I thought Ben looked a little bit ratty. Watch, watch, sorry about that. But they're not half as bad as the worst scare I've had. The cockroach that ate Cincinnati. Oh, my heart nearly stopped. You will never be taught. The cockroach that ate Cincinnati. 